Hello everyone. In this video, we'll talk about the permeability of soil. For more such videos and solved examples, you can sign up on our website apscd.in. The link is given in the description. So, what do we mean by permeability in general? So, permeability means the ease with which a fluid can flow through a medium. Now, when we are talking about particularly soil, then the fluid what we will mostly encounter is water and the medium what we are talking about is the soil itself because we are talking about the permeability of soil. So we can define the permeability of soil as the ease with which water can flow through soil. That is if we have been given two soil samples one is having some coarse soil that is coarse gravel is there and in another sample we have some fine sand it can be silt or clay now if we are trying to pass water through each of these samples then you can imagine also that it will be relatively much more easier for the water to pass through this gravel based sample than it will be possible in a clay based sample so what is the property because of which it is easier to pass the water or flow of water to take place through gravel than clay that property is the permeability of soil so as the grain size is different in different soil so based on that the pore size will be different so the permeability basically depends on the pore size now if we have a gravel then it will have bigger pores so the permeability also in, in case of gravels is high and if we consider other soils so then we have sand and then silt is there so then clay is there so so this is the decreasing order of permeability if we say so in sand it will be lesser than gravel then silt will be further lesser and clay will have the least value of permeability though pores are there in case of a clay also but these pores are not interconnected the interconnection of these pores is also necessary then then only the flow can take place apart from this pore size or here we can see the different types of soil another factor that will be affecting the permeability is the soil structure so we have two types of structure what we generally talk about first is flocculated then we also have dispersed structure so in case of flocculated structures the pores that form will be in general larger than if we have a dispersed structure because dispersed structure is much more arranged so because of that the permeability if the soil has flocculated structure will be higher compared to the soil having dispersed structure so what is the use of this property permeability so there are many practical applications if we talk about earthen dams so in case of earthen dam the seepage takes place from upstream to downstream some seepage will be taking place so we have to find out how much water how much seepage will take place or how much water will be lost due to this seepage that we have to calculate and then what are the measures with which we can safely reduce the amount of water that is being lost in seepage then in case of settlement also settlement of foundations and structures so we know as the load is applied this load settlement or the settlement of soil we consider or we cover in the consolidation of soil unit so we know that as the load is applied due to a foundation or any other reason then there will be excess pore water pressure and over the time this excess pore pressure is released now how much time is required for this excess pore pressure to be released it will depend upon the permeability of soil if the permeability is high then it can release this pore pressure easily in less time but if the permeability is low then it will require much more time comparatively similarly when a highway is designed or highway is laid then in that condition also we have to consider the these different layers so there in that case the subgrade layer it will be having this soil generally we prefer gravel in this case so that helps in the proper drainage because we do not want that the 
water should remain in these pores because that can cause chemical weathering of this subgrade and the highway material it will it will not last as long if the drainage does not take place properly so we have to consider in that case also so these are the few of the uses now we can next talk about the darcy's law so this experiment was conducted by darcy so here in a cylindrical tube there is a sample of soil and then the water flows through this sample so the water will flow due to the difference in head so if we insert piezometer in the upstream side and downstream side so here we can say in the upstream the head if you are measuring from the center line it is h1 and on the other side this head is h2 now darcy found out that the discharge through this sample it will be proportional to this difference in head that is h1 minus h2 and it will be inversely proportional to the length of the sample that is if the length is longer then discharge will reduce and if length is shorter then discharge will increase also this discharge will be proportional to the directly proportional to the cross sectional area so if higher cross sectional area is there then we can also say that discharge will be more so these are the factors or upon which the discharge will depend now h1 minus h2 we can replace with delta h so delta h by l is known as the hydraulic gradient so we can so it is generally denoted with i so we can say q is proportional to hydraulic gradient times the cross sectional area now this constant of proportionality here is considered as k so this q becomes k i a that is a darcy's law and k which is the constant of proportionality it is known as the coefficient of permeability which has a unit of velocity so it is generally given in centimeter per second now from here if we take area on the left side so we have q by a is equal to ki and we know this q by a is nothing but the velocity of flow so v from here becomes ki and from here we can also define the coefficient of permeability so we can say k is equal to v upon i and we can define coefficient of permeability as the velocity of flow through the medium under under unit hydraulic gradient that is if we put i is equal to 1 then k is equal to v so that means it is the velocity of flow under unit hydraulic gradient now this darcy law has one more assumption that the flow is laminar now in case of soils this assumption is almost all the time valid unless if we have coarse gravel as a soil or as a medium if we have coarse gravel then in that case the flow can be transient that is the next stage after the laminar flow that is a i mean it means the reynolds number will be higher so if transient flow is there then these this formulation or dependency of flow what we are talking about here is not completely true so the darcy's law is not valid in that case now here one more thing is there when we talk about the velocity so this velocity we are talking about which is taking place through the whole cross sectional area but in reality the flow is only taking place through the pores only through the pores the flow will take place so the cross sectional area should be lesser and if cross sectional area is lesser than the actual cross sectional area then velocity will be higher because we can apply continuity equation that is a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 so if we are reducing the cross sectional area then velocity will increase so the continuity equation we can write if velocity through the pores is vs and area of pores is a v or we can say this area of voids so av it will be equal to the total cross sectional area times the velocity of flow this velocity is known as the superficial velocity so from here we can write the actual velocity or vs as 
as a v times area of void then we can further write it as v s is equal to v upon a v upon a so we know the porosity is given as volume of void to the total volume now in case of soil these voids are of very small size and because these are of very small size the area of void and volume of void will be almost equal similarly this a will almost be equal to v so we can write this porosity in terms of area so we can write it as av upon a now from here we get actual velocity vs as v upon n that is the relation between the actual velocity of flow and the superficial velocity now we know that the value of porosity it is always less than 1 so the actual velocity of flow will always be greater than the superficial velocity so that is this relation now there are some values given for permeability that is if we talk about gravel so this value in centimeter per second it is greater than 1 and for sand this value is between 1 to 10 to the power minus 3 for silt this value is between 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus 6 and for clay it is about less than 10 to the power minus 6 so gravel and sand are classified as pervious then silt is classified as slightly pervious and clay is classified as impervious so if we have to reduce the effect of seepage or reduce the flow then we can give then we can provide clay material in that area because it is not a pervious material the value of coefficient of permeability is very less so that is about the permeability of soil i hope you found this video useful please like subscribe and share this video with your friends